Craig and Tim Clips. Like, I read a book by a guy named Drew Dudley. One of the things he says in his book is to practice rejection therapy, which is like take one day out of the month and all you do is try to see how many times you can get rejected. And the more times you get rejected, the better because you learn confidence and leadership from being rejected because like what's the worst that can happen actually let me just show you a quick little video of what uh what he says rejection is a fundamental part of life and none of us are particularly good at getting it and i think if you want to get good at rejection and the better you are at rejection the better you're going to be at life you got to practice it rejection therapy basically says i'm going to spend one day out of every month attempting to be rejected as many times as possible in that 24 hour period. And you discover three things as a result of that. One, you are not rejected nearly as often as you think you're gonna be. Two, when you are rejected and you expect it, it has zero impact on your self-worth. In fact, it's funny sometimes. And three, even when you are rejected, you were almost always offered something better than what you currently have. Rejection therapy is recognizing that rejection won't kill you. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to make you stronger. So with that in mind, for the last three years, I've literally just been doing things outside of my comfort zone that I normally would get rejected for. Like, you know, uh, in Disney, I went to the front of the fast pass line and I didn't have a fast pass left. And I go to the girl, I'm like, hey, I don't have any fast passes left. Can I just go on fast pass line? What's the worst going to happen? She's going to say no. And right. she's going to forget me tomorrow. No, I'm going to go to the front of the fast pass line. So I go to the front of the fast pass line. She lets me go. So like over the years, I've done a lot of this. And this time we're in the back of the line for the free throw. Because in my mind, I'm like, what's the worst thing that can so happen? Let's premise it a little bit more to say the group that we were behind had all been a little bit in 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 the, in the, in the tank the, in the tank for <laughs> that we learned afterwards walking out. With we them. didn't really know that while we were in, yeah. in line with them, but we, but we that saw that on. we saw them have a little ticket that looked yeah. like our game ticket. Yeah, and I'm like, we'll just try to use this. We start going down the stairs. You remember this? I do. And we hear the guy at the bottom go, "Hey, show me the email confirmation." Um, and at that point, I'm like, "Oh no." And then Tim goes, let's just, just keep going. Just keep going. And he's just like, keep going. He's like, Tim's behind me. Just like, let's go. Keep going. Because we're so close. We're like we're, halfway, we're halfway down. We're, we're, we're going gonna to keep up. going. There's no return here at this point. So at this point, there's like probably like seven people in front of us. And the guy in charge, of, they were all in groups. And this is the third group of people that are going to do the free throw. The guy in charge is like telling him, showing him the email and then telling him who's in the group. And as he's looking up to tell the people where his group ends, he looks back at the guy and the guy that he was talking to looks up to us and I wave. And I wave at the guy to be like, it's me, right? <laughs> and so we get to the bottom of the thing and the guy asks us for a ticket and I give him our ticket and he's like, oh no, that's the wrong ticket. And he goes, oh, don't worry. The guy Wait. in charge of your group yeah. said that you're the last guy in the group. <laughs> You can go ahead and so, three, free throw. So again, long story short, we basically ended the caboose of the group. Yeah. Uh, with the, and they just said that's that's fine. They just took our word for it that we were so uh, we were we ended up shooting the free throw. And the funny thing was is yeah. they did a group picture with the fifteen of them, and we just went in in the picture. Yeah, we just joined. And we in. walked in with out with them, and th that's when we learned that they were kind of half in the bag. But, yeah. <laughs> but it, they, they must the next day they would have got this email from the Timberwolves and with they would have looked at it with a picture saying who in who the are world those guys? are these really attractive fellas. They look uh, that Canadian. Are, that are that are beside us. That are are Canadian, like Dort and Shea Alexander. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like that. That was an experience that if I didn't have the confidence from rejection therapy, yeah. that I probably wouldn't have experienced. So because I, I would have been too. Scared. So I, I that's a great story, Greg. Yeah. And um, by uh, just basically learning by failure, the more times you fail, the more times you grow. And I've heard that in many speakers where they talk about some level of that. Yeah. And so I really appreciate that you shared that. Now I have, <laughs> yes. I have a question for you and this is a yeah. question uh, that somebody brought up. I have <laughs> a friend who, when I told him the story, thought that said, said something, they said, well, that's cool. But when you do something that is a ticketed item, are you not stealing? Uh, but it, whether those people that, that, that went on the free throw, they actually physically paid money. 
Uh, same thing for the people that that had you know fast pass amounts. You di you didn't technically have that. Are you l lying slash stealing? And is that now become morally incorrect? Is it questionable? Wrong? Yeah, but. <laughs> In essence, if they said, oh, you don't have a ticket, you can't go, I wouldn't have argued with them. Right. I wouldn't have said, oh, no, no, I'm part of this. I get to go blah, 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 bang my fist. Right. I would have just been like, oh, okay. And I would have walked away. And the same with the fast pass thing. It was more of a, hey, like, I don't have any fast passes left. Do you mind if I go in the fast pass lane? Right. And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. Right. But you didn't premise it that way. You didn't, we didn't no. say, we didn't go down to the target center saying, listen. We actually don't have tickets to do this experience, but we're here from Winnipeg. Well, they asked me for my uh, ticket, and I said I didn't have it. Right. So I'm interested, really interested, at what people have to say about that question and yeah. what they think of that answer. To me, it's interesting. Yeah. Not, not necessarily So the question is, if you do a ticketed item and you didn't have a ticket, is that morally was, irresponsible? And specifically, was Greg's example morally questionable but but again it, the experience was awesome like we will tell that story <laughs> for years and years and years we're gonna have grandkids the, like, yeah kids remember the time i'll tell you the fact story that about we tried to get a picture on the court <laughs> and the guy was like no 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 nobody's allowed on the court and then like i take a picture i, I take a selfie of myself uh with the guy in the back because now I'm on the court. I thought it was funny. I got to take a free throw. It was all in the spirit of being rejected. And I'm, I'm okay with being rejected.